DPR Jones here. This is the first of a number of videos I'll be making on legal issues, in particular issues relating to the DMCA, its abuse, and copyright matters in general. Recently, this YouTube user, Fall for a Lifetime, posted this video. In it, he expressed his views on homosexuality. I'll make no comment on the merit of its contents, but I'll summarise it by saying that it was a usual tired out diatribe of homophobic prejudices thinly veiled under the banner of Christian theology. Is unnatural. We all know that. Look at, the male an look at the male anatomy. It fits perfectly with the female anatomy. Now is that natural or not? That's natural. On the 30th of January, this YouTube user, who I'll refer to as Chris, posted a video response. In it, she used sections of the original video. Shortly after she posted it, she received a message from Fool for a Life. This message, and all the messages that subsequently exchanged between them, feature in the description to this video. They are too long to read in full, so I'll summarise the relevant parts. In his first message, Fool for a Lifetime states this. Also, sadly, I must ask you to remove your video. I read the YouTube guidelines and I can take legal action against you for copyright violation and infringement. Also, I can take you on charges of privacy violation. And so he goes on, threatening to take legal action against her, um, asks whether she thinks he's bluffing, uh, says that she could repost the video at not using his image or his voice. He concludes with this paragraph, If I'm making a killer video response to you, then why take your video down? Because the less garbage of that sort that there is on YouTube, the better. I don't care about your arguments because, like I said, I will destroy them all in the next video. User Chris responded to that message with the message shown here. I'll only read the first words. I will never take down a video under threat. As I say, the full message is in the description. Full for a lifetime then responded, part of that response being shown here. I'll just read the very last bit. I have filed my complaint and will be contacting my lawyer. If I win, I hope you have a good job because I will then sue you for my legal fees. I do not make threats and no way, shape or form which should cause dread or fear upon you in any way. I am letting you know the conditions of how I will deal with you violating privacy and copyright laws of YouTube. Half an hour after that message was sent, access to the original video made by Chris was blocked by YouTube. It's fair to say that subsequently Fool for a Lifetime has made an apology video. Here is my message for you, Fool for a Lifetime. I do not think that Chris's original video breaches any copyright law, nor any privacy rights you may have. I think you filed a bogus complaint to YouTube in order to censor comments that you didn't like. So, to use your words, here's the deal. We will test what you say in your apology. I am going to host the original video on my site. If you wish to take legal action in relation to it, you can take it against me. If you file a bogus complaint to YouTube about it, I would encourage all those who are behind the DMCA abuse channel to host it on their sites. You may wish to know that between us we have around 80,000 subscribers. I will do all that I can to ensure that the original video goes viral. Thank you all very much for watching.